Hey y'all, sorry that was a delayed start. Um, I don't think I've ever been this excited to do a book review. This book is amazing. Okay, so I had, I was at the library looking for whatever, right? And I came across this book in the um, new book chunk where they set them all up. And um, I wasn't sure that I would like it, but I was like, okay, let's try it, okay? It's called Eliza and Her Monsters. It's by Francesca Zappia. I don't know anything about the author at all, besides what the back flap says. Um, this book is so, so good. I loved it. So there's this girl named Eliza. Um, this is going to be a spoiler free review. So after you read this book, if you do, please contact me. I would love to have discussions about it that do involve spoilers. Anyway, so um, Eliza is a girl in high school and she is the author of a famous webcomic. It's called Monstrous, Monstrous Sea, and she developed it a few years before the book starts, and it's picked up a lot and super popular, right? And she's completely anonymous. No one knows who the author is. She uses a, um, oh, what is the term? She uses a different name online, like a pen name isn't the right thing because it's all online. Her username isn't her real name. Does that make sense? I think that's the right way to put that. Um, okay, so I'm not huge into comics. I'm not really on the whole webcomic thing. Sorry, pause really quick. I'm filming on a different computer than normal today and it's doing a weird glare on my face. And I also feel like it's filming delayed. So if this video is not as good of quality, that's why, and I'm sorry. Anyway, okay. So no one knows that Eliza is the author besides two of her friends that she met through the forums for her webcomic um, and she talks with them all the time but all over internet and through her phone. She's never met them face to face. Um, but this book was amazing because Eliza, she's not like me, right? I felt like I connected with her in certain ways but she is so unlike me. She's very introverted. I'm a huge extrovert. Um, she wants to be ignored. She has no friends. That's not me at all, right? So. But in other ways, I connected with her. There were other things where I was like, oh, I totally understand. But even though I'm not like her, she was so well written that I totally understood and I totally got it. Um, she doesn't care about how she looks. She doesn't really even think about how she looks. Um, to her, it's just not an issue. Her whole internal life revolves around Monstrous Sea, her webcomic, where her physical life, going to school and whatever. She has no friends. She eats lunch alone. She's constantly just sketching for her webcomic and brainstorming for it. And she doesn't talk to anybody. Um, then this boy comes to school. He's a new kid. His name is Wallace. And she sees him being bullied one day. Um, and he's always writing the way she's always drawing. He's always writing. So she kind of stands up for him, which is super out of character for her, which she's thinking about as she stands up for him. And as he's being bullied, some of her drawings fall out of her sketchbook and the kids who are bullying him also say, oh, he's writing about that um, monstrous sea thing. And so then she learns that he is a fan and he thinks that she's a fan and she doesn't tell him that she's the creator. Okay. So then the story goes on. They develop this friendship and she keeps trying to like deal with her family stuff because her family is not like her at all. Um, her brothers are way into sports and she is not. Her parents are super athletic. She is not. <laughs> um, she'd rather just be with her screen and her drawings and focused, right? And they don't get that and she doesn't get them. Um, and there were just so many things that I loved because she's not just quirky. It's very clear that there's more going on. She loves a book series that didn't end up finishing um, the author stopped writing and the final book was never published and she gets Wallace to read the books and at one point Wallace says these are all about depression and she's like what are you talking about and they have this great little dialogue for just a few pages about how the characters in there are all dealing with this and that the author is making statements about depression and Eliza hadn't ever noticed that she was reading for characters and the adventure and the setting and whatever and he was reading much more into it because that's Wallace, I'm sorry. Wallace was reading more into it on a deeper level because that's what resonated with him and what he needed out of the book series. So then as this book goes on, you realize 
this is a book about anxiety and depression. And it took me a while to recognize that. And I think it took me personally a while because I don't deal with those. I've mentioned that before in videos. If you watch my book reviews regularly, um, I've had like moments of anxiety or stronger than normal depression. And I think I had a panic attack like once or twice. I don't deal with that on a day to day. I don't deal with that regularly at all. So it's not on my radar the way it is for so many people. But there was this amazing chapter. So I loved the way the whole book was written, but there was this one chapter, it's chapter 40, and the entire chapter is dialogue. Not even, it doesn't even say, she said, she yelled, he thought. None of that. The whole thing is dialogue. And the character that Eliza is talking to in that moment, it's clear who they are but you only see them in this chapter and I realized partway through this chapter that we don't even get their name which I loved I loved that but there was this one part that I wanted to share this is later in the book so like I said I'm trying to be spoiler free um this character is talking to Eliza about her about Eliza's anxiety right and she the character I'm sorry I don't I don't even know if it's a woman. I just assumed that it was. It fit for me. But the character says, um, I've met artists before who have experienced similar feelings, not feeling worthy of their own work, guilt over an incomplete piece, anxiety about what their fans want and how they might deliver it. It's normal, but that doesn't mean it's always healthy. Eliza, your worth as a person is not dependent on the art you create or what other people think of it. And I loved that line because regardless of Eliza and her storyline here in this novel, that is something that our society is dealing with on a regular basis. People think that to be successful and have a purpose, you've got to be good at whatever you do, or you have to have good grades, or you have to make a lot of money, you have to own the boat, you have to be the Pinterest mom. It's ridiculous. That is not... That's not how it should be. Um, your worth as an individual is not based on how nice your couch is or how well the flowers in your yard grew or how often you, I don't know, get a manicure. Like all of that is ridiculous and our society is putting way too much pressure on us and is, va and is valuing people by the things they do rather than who they are. It's my dad says this quote all the time. It's more important to be kind than to be right. Like people, the way you treat people is so much better. And I know that that quote doesn't completely relate, but it's more important to be kind than rich, than beautiful in, because kindness equals beauty in my personal opinion and Audrey Hepburn's and she is brilliant. Okay. But it's more important to be kind than rich or beautiful or trendy or popular or I don't know, Facebook successful, like with a lot of followers and posts, like who cares, right? We live in such a superficial world and Francesca Zappia in this novel blows that out of the water. And I loved it. Eliza is this kid who kids at school don't even want to talk to, don't want in their groups. They think she's weird. They think she's creepy. And she is writing this incredibly popular web cartoon, web comic, sorry, web comic. And also, because of the fan merchandise that her fans buy, she's incredibly rich and successful and can pay her own way through college with no help from her parents or anybody. Like, she is set and she has no friends and she has nothing. And she thinks she has nothing. She thinks she's a nobody. And she is so successful in her internet world. She totally matters. And it's, but again, like the, like that character says in the paragraph I read, she matters not just because of how successful her art is, but because she's an individual and she's contributing and she's doing something worthwhile. Um, this book is so good. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm staying spoiler free. I really would love to give spoilers and just hash things apart and rip open this book and discuss it. So please, if you read it, especially if I know you besides just up through these videos, I would love to talk with you about it and like, go through the copy of the book with you. Um, let's see. It was published um, doo -doo -doo, published this year, 2017, by HarperCollins. 
Um, and the author, Francesca Zappia, has also written Made You Up. I have not read that, but now I'm going to because I am so impressed with her writing. And it says she also has a bi-weekly serial novel posted on Tumblr um, based off the series that Eliza loves, the one that Wallace says is about depression that I mentioned. So, um, incredibly well written. So deep, but you could also just read it for fun. Like, it is what you take out of it. And I totally sat here all afternoon and just read, and so there's that. I didn't want to stop reading. Um, also, at one point, it gave me motivation to read, which since Ry Eliza is a artist, um, she talks about her motivation a few times, and I totally connected with that. You have to get motivation from somewhere, and that's often through the other things that you're experiencing or reading or watching or whatever. And I totally felt motivation, but I don't have my laptop right now. So there's that. That was a bummer. Um, Eliza and her monsters. So good. So, so good. Please read this. I'm like everybody. Um, swearing. There was swearing. Not bad, but like not by bad. I meant frequent, not frequent, but there is some swearing, so warning if that's something that bothers you or something you try to avoid. Um, Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I think I'm saying her last name correctly. Please read it. This should be on, like, mandatory reading for every high schooler, except once it's mandatory, people don't love it anymore. This was a really good book, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Okay, keep reading. <laughs>